Hello, my sweet strangelings. Welcome to Supernatural Strange Sundays. So today I have a different format episode. Normally I tell a spooky story and all of that jazz, but today I'm going to share a very personal story that happened to me because, oh my God, you guys. All right. So the solar eclipse is known to have a lot of mysteries behind it. Some people believe it's a bringer of chaos and bad luck, and some people believe it's a time to reinvent yourself and let go of the past and break through barriers. But whatever you may stand with this, one thing for sure is that the solar eclipse brings some change. It brings some reflection. Within days of the solar eclipse, I had been invited to go to the Queen Mary. And I had gone with a friend of mine. I was her plus one. And we went there for a theatrical seance. Now, the Queen Mary is known for so many wonderful events. That being a theatrical seance, paranormal tours, tours, and much, much more. Now, on the day that I was invited, I decided to dress up in this cute Victorian dress. And I wouldn't say it's super Victorian, but it's very loosely inspired by it. It was this maroon red and had some lace in it. And I even wore these maroon ribbons around my hair, but they weren't full ribbons. You know, I decided to just kind of keep it kind of old school, but also casual. And I felt very excited for this theatrical seance, but also nervous because... I do get a little nervous doing anything theatrical, spooky stuff. And so I told my friend this, and we were waiting in the lobby. And soon enough, the host um, told everyone to gather around. And he told the stories of the Queen Mary. And as you know, the Queen Mary is many things. There's so much history. And one of the things that I find interesting that he pointed out is that it's called 57 Ghosts. Now, there have been at least 49 or more deaths recorded on the Queen Mary since its maiden voyage. So off we go down the hallway, and we head towards the stairway, an entrance to some stairs. He stops, and he pauses, and he starts telling that the story here is that people have fallen down the stairs and cracked their necks. Um, People have also seen apparitions. What was really chilling though is as he was telling the story we were at least where I was standing amongst the crowd there was people on the left side and we heard some rattling some banging against the wall now we weren't sure if that was people walking through workers walking through I mean the ship is a very busy place right there's people working there there's people um you know telling all these things I also want to pause here to also say that before we went and gathered around the host and went down the stairway, the other thing that set the tone was that this woman by the bar, we were very thirsty waiting for the host. She said, oh my God, you're going to the seance room. You're going to love it. And I can say that it is haunted. So she whips out her phone and she shows us this image of this girl in the reflection of the seance room. And according to the story... One night, the workers were getting ready to close up shop and making sure that all the rooms were cleared out. But one of the workers took a picture because he just loved the, the theme and the decorations of the seance room. And as he took a picture and the flash went off, he took a very close look at this image. In the back corner, it seemed like this face appeared out of nowhere, smiling and looking straight at him. Now, I'll try to post these photos over over on my Instagram page, so stay tuned for that. Going back to the stairways and the host telling the history. So we go down the stairs very carefully. I mean, after all, he just said several people have gotten into accidents and not several people, but there's been reports of people falling and dying. So, of course, I was cautious and I held on closely to the railing as I walked down the stairways and into the seance room. Now, the seance room was very, very interesting uh, we there was a particular way we entered and a particular way that we would exit. But I looked around the portraits, 57 portraits on one side of the wall, to a bridal dress 
in one of the corners and the other corner had these dolls and pictures and items that looked very vintage. Now the host was really good at talking about death and what it means and why we do seance in the first place. Now I am a medium so I know perfectly well why we do seances and I've done my own and I've also do psychic development workshops. So very familiar with it. So I loved hearing from an outside perspective and also somebody that isn't really into the occult do their research. Now, there is some great theatrical things within the session. I remember, you know, talking, he was trying to get us to conjure up the spirit of the little girl that allegedly died by the pool. Now, there's no record of this, but many people have reported seeing her. They've reported saying that um, there's this girl wandering the hallways looking for her parents. Uh, They hear giggles. So anyway, everything was done. I was so excited. I was so relieved and I was ready to walk around the ship and catch up with my friend that invited me on the ship. Now, as we were getting ready to leave, something weird happened. Now, there's this wooden box and you can see that there was a doll in it, but you couldn't see the face. And as we were all leaving, the doll poked its head up. It, It moved from being at the bottom to now completely towards the top of the wooden box that you can now see its face through the little opening. Now, I thought that was theatrics, but my friend was kind of weirded out by that. And so was this other couple. So as we left, you know, we stayed behind because as invites, we were going to take pictures and take a moment to talk to him so we can do a good job at posting um, some content online. Now, this couple asked the host, hey, can you tell us the history of that doll? Because it it weirded me out and it moved. Was that theatrics? And he's like, no. And he said, no, it wasn't. And, um, but he did admit that during his time doing the seances, these theatrical seances on the ship, there have been things that have not been part of the show. Now, this was one of them. The doll just all of a sudden moving where you can see it through the opening of this wooden box. So he starts telling the history, but before I could even get into the story, my eyes stopped. Now, he was facing the stairway. I was facing the side of his profile, but in front of me were these two black metal doors. And as he was telling the story, I saw this white blob just walked right past him. And I was trying to like process what I was seeing right in front of me. It almost looked like there might have been some debris in my eye, like an eye booger, but there was no feeling of my eye, anything feeling discomfort in my eye. And I blinked several times, but this thing kept moving right in front of the door and you can feel, you can see it trying to move through the door, like metal was clanking. You know, when you try to open these metal doors and there's a metal handle and you're trying to open it, it sounded just like that. And before I knew it, it went straight through the door. And I try to process what this was. It was the weirdest thing ever. I'm like, did I really just see that? But no one else flinched. No one else, you know, really reacted to that. So in my mind, I'm like, was it debris? Was it something else? Why am I going crazy? But the girl to my right gasped and turned to her sister and said, did you see that? Did you fucking see that? Now, then I knew immediately that she was talking about what I just saw. With relief, I touched her shoulder and I was like, you saw it too? You saw it too? And she goes, absolutely. So we talked about it just to make sure that we saw the same exact thing. We saw this white blob walk through in front of these doors and dissolve right through it. It was almost like an orb, but not quite. You could see its head and maybe like half the shoulder. Now, I did a video on this over on my Instagram, so if you haven't seen it, I posted it on Instagram and TikTok, and I believe I also posted it on my YouTube shorts, so make sure to stay tuned for that, but till this day, I don't, I just feel like that was the top paranormal thing I've ever witnessed in my entire life. I got in my car, and I just started crying. I think that like, you know, when you do this stuff, when you do um, paranormal investigations, when you do mediumship, it can be a very isolating experience. We all experience different things. We all see different things. Every place can have different energy to it. And at times you can't help but feel like, man, I really want this to be a shared experience. And when that happened that night, it just reinforced that there's so much more 
beyond this physical realm. And I just was, there, these were just happy tears of just that final confirmation after so many months, so many years of not experiencing something like that. And that was finally a moment that I really needed. So I will say this, as a medium, I definitely have amazing experiences reading my clients and picking up things and picking up their loved ones. I even recently did a reading for a client of mine and I was channeling her mom that passed away about a, about a year ago. And there was just so many wonderful confirmations I gave her and answered her questions without really her telling me those questions. I knew immediately who she was and I could see her in my third eye and at the very towards the very end of the session the client showed me the picture and that's exactly who I saw. So as a medium I have these wonderful moments like that but going back to the Queen Mary and seeing something in physical form that is also just as beautiful as reading a client and confirming that her mom is still there and answering all these questions that I couldn't possibly have known about had I not been channeling her mom. So there's just a wonderful week of all of that. Now I do want to say that the Queen Mary is not the first odd experience I've had at the Queen Mary. Back in 2006, 2008, between those years, I saw something in my camera. So back then, they used to have, like, that was, like, the boom of, like, digital cameras. We don't have digital cameras as, you know, as they are now. It wasn't readily accessible. The way cameras are and iPhones and footage and all like taking footage and, and photos and videos is not it's, it was not accessible as it was back then. So I remember I was so thrilled when my dad bought me this digital camera uh, at Best Buy and it was this very clunky camera with a small little screen. Um, and I remember that we, you know, I went to the Queen Mary. We uh, went to the second uh, floor where there's like the tour center area, there is, um, there's a banquet hall there. And at the time, my niece was very young and she ran around and I followed after her into the banquet hall. They left the door open. And around this time, they had this very big book that had a glass cage around it. And you can flip the pages and you can see people who, ever, who have boarded the, the ship. And one of the coolest things is that my maiden last name was on there, which is a very rare last name. I want to say that less than like 30,000 people. I don't I remember off the top of my head, but it's very rare. I remember when I did an ancestry, I remember seeing that there. Now, I was very wowed by that. I was like, cool. I just, you know, was taken back. And then I went to the banquet hall. My niece is like singing and dancing around in this empty, echoey banquet hall. There wasn't very good lighting. It was very, it was dark in there. As a matter of fact, I think what was giving the light was from the hallway and I took a picture, but in the center was this grandfather clock where its back was against the stage of the banquet hall. Cause there's like a stage to perform and stuff. And I remember when I got home, I took a closer look at this digital camera and I realized that there was this man hanging out by this grandfather clock. And I was like freaked out by that because I'm like, what am I seeing? Am I seeing this right? So, you know, my neighbor and my best friend at the time saw this and they were freaked out by what they were seeing. But when we uploaded this on the computer, a desktop computer, might I add, the image vanished. It was the same image, but it the guy vanished. But you would see it very clearly on this digital camera. And that just gives me chills. I've unfortunately, right, like this is one of the reasons why I don't tell the story is because it's such a coincidence that I would lose the camera and that the image would not show this apparition, even though it would show it on the camera. Um, so that bums me out. But I swear it's not just me. It's my best friend and my, my neighbor that saw this, you know, some comfort. Anyway, that's it for Supernatural Strange Sundays. Please let me know if you have any scary stories that you would like to submit to the show down below. I will leave my email in the description. And let me know what you think of this episode. Have you been to the Queen Mary? Uh, have you ever had experiences at the Queen Mary? I'm excited to hear from you guys. And I will talk to you guys later. But remember, stay strange.